Hey guys, Hadrian here, Invincible Jiu Jitsu, and today we're going to talk about self defense and the practicalities of self defense, the practical considerations of Jiu Jitsu and its place in self defense. Now, I want to say that is Jiu Jitsu, does Jiu Jitsu work as a fighting art? Absolutely, it does. For me, Jiu Jitsu is still the preeminent fighting art when it comes to one on one in a cage, in a ring with a ref. Um, martial art versus martial art, discipline versus discipline. I'm not talking so much about MMA now, as it has become. I'm talking about jiu-jitsu um, versus kickboxing, jiu-jitsu versus Muay Thai, jiu-jitsu versus wrestling. For me, jiu-jitsu is the complete fighting system. And this is something that isn't commonly understood by most people today. They, they see jiu-jitsu as primarily a grappling art, an art where you're on the floor with someone else, you're rolling around trying to catch submission holds. This is more, this is BJJ, this is sport Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I'm talking primarily now about Gracie Jiu Jitsu uh, and the fighting system that it represents. And for me, there is a big difference, again, which is not widely known or widely practiced anymore. Most people, once again, they practice Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and think that this is, this encapsulates Jiu Jitsu as a fighting art. No, this is Jiu Jitsu as a sport. So there is a difference. So, Let's say Gracie Jiu Jitsu is a phenomenal fighting art, one on one, in a cage, with a rule set, discipline versus discipline. But is it practical for the street? Well, let's look at the requirements of a street situation where it is totally unpredictable. Never mind weapons, knives, guns, whatever. Random passers-by may get involved. There are cars if it's on a, on a busy street. There's concrete. There's glass. There's, there's just total unpredictability. Anything can happen, and it does. Now, my experience is jiu-jitsu, obviously. I fought in the cage, competed in many jiu-jitsu tournaments. But I worked also for five years as a doorman in Los Angeles. I worked at bars and clubs all over L.A., and uh, got myself into some situations, got out of some situations, and I learned a lot along the way, and I learned a lot about what is practical in terms of martial arts and what is not so practical. And so that is where all this is coming from. It's coming from my own experience. Perhaps other people have a different perspective based on their experience. This is mine. Let's talk about self-defense, the term self-defense itself. For me, this is an incorrect way to think about things. If you are approaching a potentially life-threatening situation with a defensive mindset, you are on the back foot. You are waiting for something to happen to you. Now we know when it comes to one-on-one -on -one combat, whether it's one-on-one -on -one combat, whether it's large-scale warfare, throughout history, stealing the advantage, stealing the element of surprise is key and is employed by all successful generals, warriors, throughout history. The element of surprise is everything. Now, a mugger or an attacker in the street, a rapist, whatever it is, they're gonna use, they're gonna do what they can to use the element of surprise on you. So if we're thinking defensively, we're making it easier for them to surprise us because we're waiting for something to come at us. So we have to think preemptively. Now the term self-protection is more commonly used with, with um, practitioners of, of um, you know, real life situations and people that teach this kind of stuff. And it more accurately ref reflects the, just the mindset shift that one needs to really stay safe. The first thing is vigilance. That's 90% of self-protection, just knowing what and who is around you, what your environment is. But the second the key element is being preemptive. Again, stealing the initiative in a potentially dangerous situation. So we never want to wait for something to happen to us. If we get even a whiff of danger, then we must act preemptively. We must use the element of surprise to our advantage before it is used on us. There was a video recently of, of Nate Diaz. I think he was in Louisiana, like Mardi Gras or something. A bunch of people around drinking, carousing. And um, some guy came up to him. I guess he was a Logan Paul lookalike or a Jake Paul lookalike. Uh, 
And Nate hooked him, got him in the guillotine, choked him unconscious, boom, out. Nate got a lot of heat for this. People were saying, oh, the guy approached him with his hands up. And Nate just choked out this innocent guy who was just trying to talk to him. Nate did absolutely the right thing. Yeah, the guy's walking towards him with his hands up and he's talking, but Nate doesn't know who this guy is. He doesn't know what he wants. This is a, this is a classic example of a potential uh, attacker trying to utilize the element of surprise. They use deception to get close enough to attack. And that's what this guy might have been trying to do with Nate. So Nate acted preemptively to neutralize the threat. The way I teach it with my students, obviously Nate Diaz is an exceptional fighter. He can catch, he can hook someone, choke him unconscious in moments. For a lot of people, if we're talking about just the practical applications of learning an effective self-defense system, I would always go for the knockout blow over, the, over grappling. I, I don't want to try and grapple with someone because again, while I'm grappling with one person, his buddy may be coming out of nowhere with a, with a glass bottle and trying to land that thing on my, on my head. So, but Nate, again, again, Nate did absolutely the right thing. He acted preemptively, neutralized the threat and um, lived to tell the tale. Forget this self-defense this self mindset, acting defensively. We must always be preemptive, first with our um, situational awareness. We're always looking out, aware of who is around us. And that doesn't mean we walk around paranoid, looking around every street corner, but we just take a casual interest in our environment. And if something flags as being a little bit unusual, then our, our attention goes to whatever that is until we have resolved the situation, either peacefully or preemptively. So we are acting preemptively with our awareness and then preemptively when it comes to the physical side of things, if it merits that. And this for me is one of the big, the big ways in which most martial arts, including most jujitsu, falls down because it is not practiced with this preemptive approach, this self-protection approach. Again, it's all self-defense. And there is, a, there is a, a sort of an ethos, if you will, of I couldn't possibly strike first because that's not the honorable thing. Let me tell you, there's no honor in the street. There are those who win and those who lose. That's about it. There's not much in between. So if you want to make sure that you are never one of those who comes out on the losing end, you have to be ready to um, strike preemptively. And this is how we must train our martial arts, whether it's jujitsu, whether it's anything else. Now let's look at the practicality of the technique side of things. In the street, and this is something I learned working the doors, I never want to go to the ground. Going to the ground is the absolute last resort. If I go to the ground, I'm trying to get back to my feet as quickly as I, poss I possibly can. Let me tell you a story. As a blue belt, working the doors, I was, new to, I was fairly new to, to being a doorman, but I was a blue belt and uh, got into a, a situation with a guy, he didn't want to leave the bar. We got into a tussle. I hit him with an incredible, a beautiful foot sweep. Delicious. Took him over, boom. Took his back, jumped on his back. So I'm on the floor, I'm on his back. And I'm on my back on the floor, so he's kind of on top of me. Sunk in the rear naked choke. Put it on, squeezed it, and he started, he immediately relaxed. I thought to myself, wow, this jujitsu is legit. It's like having a superpower. What I didn't factor in was this guy's buddies closing in on me like a pack of wolves from all sides. And I remember just looking up as one of his friends had a pint glass in his hand. He threw whatever beer was left in that glass. He dashed it in my face and now I'm half blind. I can barely see. And I just remember him raising the glass over his head. Now I'm on the back with this guy on top of me. I've got the rear naked choke sunk in. I've got the hooks in. I can't move. I can't get up quickly enough to defend myself. I am totally at the mercy of this guy with a glass, um, pint glass above his head, ready to bring it down across my skull. The only thing that saved me was the barman. Dived over the bar like Superman, tackled the guy. I got back to my, my feet, threw the first guy out, threw the second guy out, the other doorman came over. We got the rest of the guys out and we survived the night. But that to me was a big, big lesson. I never want to go to the ground. Going to the ground is the absolute last resort in the street. Because again, 
even passers by, they will see you mounted on someone. Maybe you're just trying to subdue a violent, crazy person, but they will see, they will perceive that you are the aggressor and they'll come along and they'll hoof you right in the face and you will end up going to hospital. And that happens. That happens all the time. So the practicalities of, of going to the ground are, for me, there's, there's no practical application in trying to take the fight to the ground. Now look, of course, in a desperate situation, it's better to have something than nothing. If all you've got is jujitsu, um, and it's one person attacking you, you don't know that they've got friends, you don't know that they don't have friends, but it's one person attacking you, and all you think, all you can do, all you feel like you can do is get them to the ground and control them, that's better than, than nothing, of course, but you have to be aware that, again, anything can happen, and when you're on the ground, you're vulnerable. So this is a huge consideration when training jiu-jitsu for self-defense, self-protection. For me, uh, something like boxing is probably a more practical discipline when it comes to street safety. Because you can hit and move, you're on your feet, you've got your head, head on a swivel, you can see who's coming at you all the time, almost all the time. You can move, you can move and react quickly. So something like boxing is very practical for the street. And, um, and wrestling. Wrestling, because you don't want someone to take you down. And if you can take them down with a slam or a throw, great. Hitting someone with the earth is even more effective for ending, ending a fight than hitting them with your hand, quite often. So if you can take them down without having to go to the ground yourself, beautiful. So boxing and wrestling, killer combination. So what are we learning here, guys? There are some practical applications, pra practical considerations when it comes to street safety. Um, Primary amongst them is situational awareness and thinking and acting preemptively, always. Never allow someone to take you by surprise. You must wield the weapon of surprise uh, if you wish to be the victor. And try not to take it to the ground if you can. If you can avoid going to the ground, do so. Because it's difficult to run away when you're scrambling around on the concrete and you may need to run for your life. Again, weapons, guns, other people, all these things are a factor. Guys, if you have any questions about this, any thoughts, any feelings, any perspectives on, on the jujitsu for self-defense question, I know it's a big one, I know it's a controversial one, people love to go back and forth about this all the time, um, but I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions. Again, these, what I've talked about in this video is based on my experience working the doors for many years and getting into some hairy situations, and um, luckily, being able to extricate myself from those hairy situations. If you like the content, guys, like, share, and subscribe. It helps us uh, grow the channel, spread the good word. And until then, I'll see you in the next video.